This is the River Hawk Report, a weekend recap for Tuesday, April 27th, 2010. A busy weekend. Baseball, softball, rowing, and track and field. There were more wins than losses, but it is getting to be crunch time. We start on the ball field at Wallasher Park. The baseball River Hawks took two out of three games during the weekend. They swept a doubleheader Saturday, a pair of nail-biting victories filled with drama against Pace University, but dropped a Sunday Senior Day game against a very tough team from Franklin Pierce University. The Saturday heroes were many, both in the lineup and on the mound. That's what this team has to do for us to continue to have success. Uh, We need everybody in the lineup to contribute and do their job. When you see those guys that have maybe not played much in the beginning come through, I mean, you feel good for them because they've worked very hard. That is head coach Ken Herring, Zach Roy, and Monty Morocco. Two guys who've had limited playing time came up with key run scoring hits in the first game. Cam Nealon had four hits on the day and three RBIs. The runs driven in came in three different at-bats. With runners on base, you just got to attack early and look for the best pitch to hit. I don't know exactly what, what count it was when I hit it, but I, I know I got three fast fastballs to hit and I'm just trying to put the ball in play and drive the runner in. Nealon at the moment is in a groove and he says it is all about getting a good at bat. Good at bat is swinging at good pitches like coach says swinging at a good 2-0 pitch. When you have good swings the ball is going to jump off the bat. I consider a good at bat just as long as you got a good swings in there. The Riverhawks took the first game 5-3. to three. A big thank you went to the bullpen. Garrett Cole and Jack Leathersitch combined for four innings of two-hit shutout relief. The nightcap was about drama, and the Riverhawks won at 5-4. Jared Notter Giacomo led off the bottom of the eighth inning with a game-winning solo home run to left. Leading off an inning, you just try and get on and get something started and maybe get bunted over second and score a run. We only needed one. I'm not trying to swing too hard to put it out or anything like that. Just trying to get something started. And he made me look foolish on the first pitch and thankfully hung me one and, you know, got lucky and got put it over the fence. To look foolish on the pitch before and then knew that they were throwing it again. That's a veteran that he knows that pitch is coming. He sat back and he hit that ball as hard as you could hit it. But uh, the ball jumps off his bat, makes a different sound than a lot of other guys, and he's really put together good at bats. I mean, he struggled a a couple ABs in the first game where he had two O counts and kind of jammed himself and got himself out, and we talked about it in between games. But what he's been able to do is make adjustments. That one felt pretty good. Um, I I didn't know if it was going to get out or not, but I was, I was, felt good. (laughs) Notre Giacomo, Neyland, and Luke Wallace each had two hits in the ball game, and again the bullpen got the job done. Four relievers combined to throw the final four innings, allowing just one run. Jack Leathersitch, normally a starter, came out of the bullpen for the second game in a row and got the final three outs. Because he comes out and lets it all go, and it's tough to lay off a 93-94 mile an hour fastball. You get more swing and misses, especially that fastball, the letter high fastball that might look like a strike, and it's really not. He's, he's He just looks like a different pitcher out there. He's just, here it is, hit it and uh, he doesn't nibble as much. And he, and he comes out and pumps strikes and gets ahead of hitters. It's awful tough to lay off that 0-2 pitch that's at the, at the letter. The save was the third of the year for Leathersitch. The final was 5-4, UMass Lowell. Sunday was frustrating. The Riverhawks never got the bats going against Franklin Pierce and some pretty nasty pitching. The visitors were winners 5-1. to one. Before the game, the Riverhawks honored their seniors. Great group. Uh, all really good kids. Um, it's been a pleasure to coach all seven of them. You know, they've really grown a lot. I think, I mean, they're, they're a good group, and uh, they're all going to graduate, and uh, that's the main thing, and we'll miss them. Jared Nutter, Giacomo, Luke Wallace, J.T. Leary, Taylor Von Kriegenberg, Matt Monaco, Jeff Maloney, and Peter Anoronto. Leary had three hits and an RBI in the game. The Riverhawks are now 24-19, and 11-12 and 12 in the Northeast 10 Conference. They visit Franklin Pierce on Tuesday. we got to come out hacking on Tuesday and take it to them. You know, they took it to us pretty good today and we need to take it back to them. UMass Lowell Softball River Hawks had a strong weekend. They won three of four games in New York State. Saturday, the River Hawks swept the College of St. Rose 8 to 2 and 4 nothing. The day was, as one might guess, all about the pitching. Alyssa Boris won the first game. Alyssa Bryan won the second with a masterful performance. She allowed just three hits in picking up her tenth win of the season. Sunday, the River Hawks split a pair of games at Lemoyne. They dropped the first game 5 to 2, but won the night camp 8 4. Alyssa Boris homered in each game. Her tenth and the 11th bombs of the year. That is, by the way, a new UMass Lowell single season record. The Riverhawks are now 21 and 22, 13 and 11 in the Northeast 10. They host Franklin Pierce on Tuesday.
Track and field at Brown University during the weekend. Among the winners, the women's 4x100 meter relay team. Doug Caves won the 200 meter dash. Evan White grabbed the 400 and Robert Lightwig won the 400 hurdle. Rowing on the river on Saturday. The women's varsity four, a winner. They're undefeated this season. And that's the Riverhawk Report for Tuesday, April 27th, 2010.